WWE paid tribute to Bray Wyatt at the Hall of Fame. A top WWE star is close to the end of their career, and Triple H takes a shot at AEW. Stay tuned for all the deets. So last night was the WWE Hall of Fame, and one of the inductees was Mike Rotunda of the US Express. Uh, but his children, uh, Bo Dallas and Mika Rotunda, inducted their father and uncle, uh, and they are obviously Bray Wyatt's brother and sister. Uh, they took a moment during their speech to pay tribute to their brother who tragically passed away last August, saying, We would be remiss not to take a moment to acknowledge Wyndham Rotunda, also known as Bray Wyatt. He should also be standing on this stage with us tonight. He may not be on this stage, but we know he's here. And then following that, uh, there was a rather touching moment, wasn't there? Yeah, so later on when Mike Rotunda, part of the US Express, came out for his uh, actual induction speech himself alongside uh, Barry Wyndham, Bray Wyatt's father asked the fans in attendance if they'd light up their phones and create fireflies for Bray. He said, I would just like to say that I wish that our son Wyndham could have been here. He would have liked to see his old man go in the Hall of Fame. In honour of Wyndham, please join us. They then lit up their own phones and the WWE panned around the entire arena as the place was lit up with fireflies. It was a really, really nice moment, a really nice way to pay tribute to Bray Wyatt in a Hall of Fame that many people expected Bray to go in. But yeah. Mike Rotunda, as we've covered last week, um, was quite happy that the pressure was not on him as yeah. well for Bray to go into the Hall of Fame this year, have it stand apart, pay tribute with the documentary. And sort of allow that time, I guess, to... Allow, allow the family yeah. to breathe and pay tribute in their own way, which obviously they got to do here. The, 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 the Hall of Fame was structured this year to allow that moment to be the last thing that we mm -hmm. sort of saw and have the, the tribute to Bray be there. So it was really, really nice way to do it. Um, I, you know, I, it must have been incredibly hard for it, to, yeah, for all of the family to go of through course. that. It, it's it was just it was a beautiful moment to see, and you know, hopefully, when we do finally see Bray get inducted into the Hall of Fame, um, you know, it, it, it's it's it's. It's going to be everything that we think it's going to be because you know that it's it's going oh, yeah. to be amazing. Yeah, one hundred percent. But keeping it with the Hall of Fame last night as well, uh, during his Hall of Fame induction speech, Paul Heyman praised Triple H for how he handled taking control of WWE, uh, saying the way that this man has assumed the pencil of this company and has led us to a creative freedom backstage where more superstars are emerging into the main event in front of your very eyes, and the manner in which he leads us for. Pers for prosperity into that camera for the rest of my life, I will be a Paul Levesque guy. Yeah, it was a That's big high moment. praise. High praise coming from Paul Heyman and in Philadelphia, a yeah, place that of you know all e places. ECW it's, it's it's home. Yeah, Paul Heyman sort of home in 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 Philadelphia, and having that moment where he directly in his own speech, his own mm. moment of hey, I'm an I great, and took it away. And, and gave Triple it to, H yeah. sent the front row. It was just class, isn't it? It's just class. A really cool moment. It puts him over. It was a really nice way to address the fact that, you know, the the time has changed. And, there has and been a re regime change. The company never really mentions that sort of stuff on camera unless it's part of a major kind of, ha-ha, we are your new authority figures style storyline. Yeah. So it, it's one of those where it's, it's largely just little kind of mentions on commentary, maybe a little like joke here or there about things changing. But... For, for it actually to have that moment where yeah. it's like, hey, things have changed. This guy is in charge. And I the, think... Well, the yeah. one thing I was going to say was the, the mentions of creative freedom backstage. Yeah. It's interesting. We're hearing him on camera on WWE programming, just expressing the fact that they're all creatively yeah. free. It's like, it, it, it's basically confirming everything that you know we'd heard for the longest time, that mm -hmm. everything was a little bit under the thumb and, and just completely, completely rigorously uh, kept it to whatever standard Vince saw. How long until we get I'm a Paul Levesque guy t-shirts? Oh, there'll probably be already one up on Redbubble. Because we've got, we've, got we've got the Paul Heyman ones, <laughs> but we've not got the Paul Levesque ones. We need them soon at some point. We had another major event, one of the one of the events of each WrestleMania week calendar, the, especially the weeks that I was there. Um, it was... <laughs> Ring of Honor, Supercard of Honor last night. I don't know, my brain went mental there. <laughs> uh, we had Mark Briscoe against Eddie Kingston in the main event, and Mark Briscoe defeated Eddie Kingston to become the new Ring of Honor world title for the f uh, world title world champion for the first yes. time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it was the main event match. Uh, by the end of the match, Briscoe was bleeding very badly, but managed to hit a J driller on Kingston to win the Ring of Honor world title for the first time. As we said, uh, following his win, uh, the locker room, friends, family, everybody just poured out to celebrate mm. the win. Uh, it's 11 years to the day that his brother won the title for the first time. Which as well. is a really, really nice moment for him yeah. having that moment where it was, I saw Ring of Honor tweeted April 5th, 
2013, Jay, uh, Jay Briscoe wins the Ring of Honor world title for the first time. April 5th, 2024, Mark Briscoe wins the world title for Which the very just, first time. It, again, another incredibly touching Nice moment. full circle. But we didn't just have one title change, did we? No, we didn't. So Billy Starks was challenging Queen Aminata to, to, to crown the very first Ring of Honor Women's TV champion. Well, during the match, there was an injury angle that some people online have praised massively. Mm. Others have criticized heavily. So it's a little bit controversial. Mm. She went up to the top rope and hit a swanton bomb onto Queen Aminata. Uh, she managed to get her knees up and hit Billy in the back of the head. Yeah. She then feigned a broken neck or a neck injury that was in very serious. Right. Uh, Ring of Honor production, the TV, they showed her for a little bit. Then they got the medical involved and then the camera avoided her and went to the commentary team, went to Queen Aminata, mm. went to the referee, then went back to Billy a little bit to show that she was getting treatment and she was quite upset, like visibly yeah. very, very upset and shaken. Uh, they managed to get her on her feet, walk her to the ropes. Queen Aminata held the ropes open and then it was a bloody ruse. I mean, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to give props to the to the length it went. Oh, like, it went for it was like me, two minutes. Part of me feels like wrestling. To be a wrestler, is sort of like it's like comedy, right? Mm -hmm. Where people have some people have the view that some things can't be joked about. Some people have the view that either everything's funny or nothing's allowed to be funny, right? And I think with wrestling, it might be like everything is workable or some things aren't allowed yeah. to be worked. So I think there might be two schools of thought. Again, you've got to give it props for going to that length because I imagine that, you know, the resp I've not had a chance to see yeah. the show yet, but I imagine the response to that from the live crowd was oh, incredibly the nuclear disgusted. So the, the crowd was silent oh. throughout the entire injury angle. Oh. Um, and then when the twist happened, it did it did. Oh, I thought up. you meant it was silent no, on the twist. No, no, I was no, like, worry. oh God. No, the, the, they were like worried. The crowd bought yeah. into it. That was, that was great to see. She then obviously did reveal it was a ruse. She mm. German suplexed Queen Aminata and then locked in a sleeper making her pass out Billy laughing sort of hysterically as she passed <sighs> made her pass out and then winning the Ring of Honor it's, women's TV title for the first it's time. like the it's one of the worst things that can happen in the ring and that's mm -hmm. why I get you know it, it's maybe it isn't something you could do but I I, I don't know that sort of let us know. Do you, do you think it was? What do you think? Yeah. Is it, is it, is it, can you can you use that in a work situation? I think I think it worked really really well. I can understand the, the backlash mm. though. Uh, so some, some, I mean, it's not unexpected news. It's news that I imagine we were all expecting to, to have to read one day, uh, but it seems like a top WWE star is close to the end of his career. Uh, admitting to the ringer, uh, just that much, uh, I'm close to the end of my career, is AJ Styles. He says, I'm getting close, I'm getting close to the end. I want to have that story and match to go with it before I leave WWE. That's what I'm looking forward to the most. And then he says, I'm done, I'm going to retire. I'm getting to the point where I'm worried about embarrassing myself. And this is weird because it begins to echo the Undertaker's sentiments. Yes. Uh, I've spent more than half of my life doing this, but at some point you have to let go because it's fun, but I don't want to disappoint you. When you see AJ Styles, I want you to go, that's my guy, that's the guy I know, rather than he just isn't the same guy and can't do what he used to. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to let you down. My time's coming. It's getting short and I'm going to enjoy it. I promise you that. I don't want to see the day AJ Styles retires because he's just been a constant. Whenever I've watched TNA, whether I've watched New Japan or watched WWE, he he's was, been a constant. You know, like after being a, a, a the two companies WCW WWF kid, right, mm -hmm. and then eventually being like, oh, there was a third company. What? Um, I like mind blown when I saw TNA for the first time on like yeah. Bravo, and you'd watch an X Division. It was like, there's more. Yeah, there's like more wrestling, and AJ was always from day one. Like you know, whenever I was started watching it, like he was prominent he was yeah. present on the the product so i i think like it, it's it's going to be such a monumental loss but at the same time if aj stays anywhere in or around the wrestling industry whether that's opening a school whether that's becoming a trainer or a producer uh, or hell even running his own company i think the guy you know has, has obviously got an He's immense got amount of talent talent skill, and, and knowledge, knowledge to yeah. just pass on it's like sean michaels like with his recent comments they're very hey, very nice well, sean michaels cm punk and aj styles running nxt that's that is cooking <laughs> that's, that that's cooking it's cooking on gas <laughs> yeah that would that'd be <laughs> insane you've got the promos the in ring you've got everything Whoa. of course uh, everything is happening all at once everywhere everything everywhere all at once uh, over Wrestlemania week uh, they've had the media day uh, and during WWE's scheduled media morning which allows the press it's sort of the sort of stuff where we would get up at five o'clock mm -hmm. you'd shuffle over to a convention center you'd sign a thing they had you like a, a, a pass and then you sit around awkwardly just chain drinking coffee until the first face pops out and it's like right questions questions questions, questions. what can we ask them uh, 
But it, it wasn't just that straightforward this time, was it? No, no, because um, so AJ Styles arrived much earlier. Mm. Um, he was getting interviewed between nine and ten, and then around ten o'clock, Ellie Knight turned up, and there was about a fifteen twenty minute overlap where mm. they were both being interviewed right next to each other. They kept giving each other glances back and forth. Eventually, Ellie Knight just went over and punched him, and they started grappling, started brawling, and it was kind of rough. It wasn't like a WWE Styles um, is bleeding fight. Yeah, Styles was bleeding. The security he took ages to get involved and eventually a WWE staff member came over and was like LA LA back off you don't want to do this right now Styles a man known for not, not swearing, swearing yeah. not cursing he says shoot and flipping because because he, he doesn't do it yeah says I'm gonna F you up to to LA night and then just for some reason takes his shirt off <laughs> <laughs> takes his shirt off because have you seen the size of AJ Styles Wait, at the moment that he and, is hench that and all of the reports from all of the media in the room because there's media in the room you've got to make it as convincing as possible you've yeah. got to make it angry you've got to make it aggressive you've got to just get crazy with it rips his shirt off and at the end of every single report it's going to be and then he ripped off his shirt to reveal <sighs> his glistening abs before <sighs> getting dragged out of the room and it's just going to be like this huge detailed thing and then rips his shirt rips off. His <laughs> if, if you if you look like AJ Styles currently it does, on the floor and walks out. I can see why. Everybody's just looking at the shirt like, what the, <laughs> what the what hell's the hell going happened? on? But as you did mention, yeah, he yep. got busted open. His nose was bleeding pretty mm. badly. There was a little bit of speculation when it first went down on tw uh, on Twitter. Mm. Has he injured himself? It looks like he's all good though. Well, uh, wrapping up this one here with some news from the Pat McAfee show last night before last night's WWF. Uh, WWF? Oh, Sam. God. <laughs> WWE Smackdown. Uh, Triple H was asked about the differences he sees between the Attitude Era and today. And he says, we were building up against something. Right now, we're against ourselves. We're up against the Attitude Era. We're up against the Ruthless Aggression Era. Whatever you want to call it. The best of the absolute best of WWE. That's what we're working against. Triple H claimed that he wasn't trying to cause controversy with his comments, but did throw a little bit of a subtle shot at AEW and talent who chose to sign there by saying that just because someone succeeds somewhere else doesn't mean they will succeed in the big time. When I see people that come out of trying to make it and they pick the job where they go, well, they work less, the schedule's lighter. All right, I'm glad I didn't get you because if you're not in it for the grind at that point early in your career, you have no business being here. And that's kind of the thing. We've obviously seen a lot of free agents sign with AEW and mm -hmm. a lot of the reasoning behind that as has been opened by those free agents is the schedule's lighter and the money's better and I can live at home. I don't. There's, I can travel. Osprey, for example, is, is still living in the UK and traveling every week. There's been an entire sort of change in the mentality of work generally over the last four years, let alone from like the 90s, right? Like yeah. the, the wrestling industry is something that maybe people didn't realize how intensely the travel was. Like maybe I remember as a kid being like, oh, they probably just get ferried everywhere by the company. No, it's Most like there's, there's so much that goes into it, especially if you're working with WWE. Uh, WWE. Now they did it again. What's going on? <laughs> You can tell I've been doing dated voiceovers, uh, but like, you know, there's this, so much goes into the actual doing the work with a company like WWE. And I think that generally when you look at office jobs, people can work from home now. There's been a whole change in the mentality surrounding what a job is and how it should work. So mm -hmm. I understand that there's going to be that kind of mentality of like, some people are going to just be like, hey, well, if I can work less then great. But I understand what Triple H is saying because I guess it's one of these where it's not like a job, right? It's sort of like, becoming a wrestler is kind of like being your own band. You've yeah. got to get yourself over in front of that audience as best you can with what you've got, with the time you've got, and you've got to just, you've got to wow them and you've got to get everybody on your side. So I think like, for that, you have to just throw everything absolutely into it. But at the same time, I can completely understand. I can see the work like 300 days a year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I can understand <laughs> both sides to that yeah. argument. Um, but yeah, a little soul shot at AEW just, wins. Just a, just a little one. And he can't help himself. I'm sure. Well, I'm going to need your help here, Fraser, because yeah. uh, it's bloody WrestleMania. It's bloody Saturday. WrestleMania. It's WrestleMania weekend, yeah. and uh, that means that here at Cultaholic, as you've noticed, we've had a lot of WrestleMania content uh, in the build-up to WrestleMania, and right now is when the granddaddy hits. This is uh, this is we're going have what happened at we've well first off we've got live stream today we've got the nxt reactions yeah. uh, for stand and deliver with ross and jack 4 p.m twitch.tv forward slash cultaholic 4 p.m 4 p.m time. so about British two hours summertime. after about you see this after right you now see this video right now uh, and then later on this evening from 10 p.m uh uk british summer time we've got adam pachiti and andrew hodkinson going up one-on-one -on -one at night one of wrestlemania in their yes. reaction stream then we've got what happened at we've got what wtf and then we've got 
everything happening all Abuse. over again. Yeah, just everything. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a lot. So just as we said earlier, keep WrestleMania on one window. Keep Cult the Holic on the other. And if anything Stick happens, we'll be keeping an eye on all of the wider shows going on. Any news breaks, any any drama, any exciting rumors, and we'll be right on we'll it. We'll be right on it. And maybe Julia. We're gonna maybe see Julia by like. It's seven, eight o'clock tonight. Maybe. Ooh. We'll see. We'll see. Right. I can't wait for more wrestling. Catch you in a bit.